Greetings folks. Today we're going to take a look at general purpose input output hardware for microcontrollers. This is one of the things that defines the difference between a microcontroller and a generic microprocessor. The microcontroller has to be able to read external sensor values and it also has to be able to actuate external devices, in other words turn on lights, fans, motors, things like that. So how does this GPIO, this general purpose IO hardware, how does it work? How is it configured? Well, first of all, everything, virtually everything is connected up to a data bus. So what's a data bus? Well, you could just think of this as a big connection of wires. Um, depending on the width, like we might have an 8-bit data bus, a byte-wide data bus, you can just visualize that as eight parallel wires, and things are connected to them. So I'm going to draw one bit worth of uh, interface circuitry out here. All right. So, for example, I would have a tap off of this data bus, and I would go into uh, a little flip-flop, D flip flop over here. All right, so this is incoming, if you will. Uh, I'm not going to draw all of the external circuitry. I'm not going to draw the clocking circuitry and all that, but suffice to say that there is appropriate clocking circuitry and things of this nature. But this Q output will simply go out to a physical pin located right on the case, if you will, of. Uh, the microcontroller, right? So that's the physical pin. As I said, I'm just drawing one bit. So if this is an 8-bit bus, there's going to be eight of these things. And it's to this pin that we will connect things like, you know, LEDs or relays or, you know, whatever it is that we need, um, depending on what the load current is and so forth, because this is probably not going to generate a lot of current. I might need something, you know, a transistor as an interface. All right. That's on the output end. So essentially what ends up happening is uh, an appropriate value, maybe from a variable, is placed on the data bus. So those highs and lows are essentially connected to this flip-flop, which is then clocked through and winds up on the physical pin. Right? So I get a high or a low out here on the physical pin. Now, because I have this flip-flop in the way, you know, the value on the data bus can now change. So it can be used for something else. And it's the flip-flop that holds that or latches the data for the physical pin. So it's not like I have to constantly write this. Once it's written in, um, the value on this pin either stays high or low depending on that flip-flop. Okay, going the other way. Same sort of deal. I'm just going to flip this around. All right, you know, clocking circuitry and so forth. Q goes out here. And again, highly simplified. We would probably have out here a Schmidt trigger to clean up any, you know, dirtiness, if you will, on our physical pin. So here's another pin. So I could have a sensor out here, right? This thing goes high, it goes low. We can clock that in to the flip-flop, which holds this level, um, puts it on the data bus, off we go, right? Now there's a practical problem with this. So if a data bus has uh, eight bits, and I'm only drawing one bit's worth, right? The question is, do I need a physical pin for every single thing here? That's going to be a lot of pins. You know, if I don't have a, a big controller, maybe I only have, uh, you know, three or four ports, well, at eight bits a piece, you multiply this out, input, output. I'm not even talking about special purpose pins like we might have connected to uh, timer counters, you know, waveform generators, analog digital converters, things like that. I'm just talking about this general purpose digital I.O. You can see that pretty soon we're going to be looking at a processor that's going to have hundreds easily of physical pins and in most applications 
we're only going to be using a fraction of them. So that's not very efficient. So what we do instead is we multiplex the physical pins. In other words, that pin could be connected to a bunch of different things. It might be connected to four or five things, and we have to program, indicate somehow, which thing it's going to be connected to. So conceptually, this is fine, but it's got some practical limitations, right? So an improvement on this, a more practical thing is to take our data bus. And again, I'm only going to draw one bit here and change this around a little bit. So very quickly, I'm going to replicate what I have. So here's my, the read part of it, right? My little Schmidt trigger to clean it up. And here's my output end. Now, I'm going to connect both of these things to one pin. So here's my one physical pin out here. I can't just do it directly. I can't just draw this into here and this, because what's going to end up happening is, um, you know, if we try to read something, this already has a value on it, you know, from some earlier process, and that's going to mess up what's on the physical pin. Uh, you know, in one case it's input, in the other case it's output. Well, I can't drive this thing while I'm also trying to read it. So I have to have something to sort of separate these. And what we do is we put a little tri-state buffer out here, right? So what's the tri-state buffer? You know, tri-state is three states. You have the normal high and low. And you have a third state, which is usually called high impedance, high Z, which is basically disconnecting the thing, right? You could imagine it as just being like a switch that opens up. So I'm going to draw a little something up in here in just a moment, but... I do want to put my connection back to the read side of this. So what's going to happen is when I'm reading from this, we're going to take this path, right? We're going to take this lower path. This is the, the input or read path. And then the right path is going to be this way. I have to add a little something up here. I have to add uh, another little flip-flop, which is going to control this tri-state. All right, so that goes in like so. And I'm going to pull something in here. Now, this thing up here is what's referred to as a data direction register. It's actually a bit of a data direction register because I'm only drawing the one. That's a little bit of a mouthful. So we just call that a DDR. Right. So essentially what we do is we decide, do I want to use this pin for input mode or output mode? And then we write the appropriate value to the data direction register. So that either um, enables the green path, if you will, right? So this is normally high-low. Or if we want to do a, um, a, the read path, the red one here, what we do is um, we assert the data direction register to put this into high-Z mode. In other words, it takes this guy out of the picture. And all we have is the read path, right? So the very first thing we have to do is set up the data direction register. Once that's done, we can read and write to and from these two guys as desired. So you can't do simultaneously, right? Um, you would have this physical pin out here, which is, you know, hardware. The setup for the DDR is going to be a, an in an initialization routine. You basically set that up once and forget about it. Because, you know, out here I've got some kind of actuator. I've got a sensor. I'm either going to read or write. I'm probably not going to be flipping back between those two things. Right? Not normally. So we sort of do a setup, and then we have 
one or the other, but I only have one physical pin, right? So that works out to be a very efficient way as far as packaging this is concerned. Now, in the uh, Atmel world, right, this is um, on an Arduino Uno, and um, the company here is Atmel, and that processor is called an Atmega, that's the series. It's an Atmega 328P. That thing has three of these 8-bit ports. So we use the word port generically here, right? A byte-wide uh, collection of, of these bits, okay? Now, um, in the uh, Arduino Atmel Atmega world, when we talk about output, talk about port, right? Capital letters. So if you're going to write to the outside world, we talk about a port. If we're reading to distinguish these, we call them pins. That's a little confusing because you're talking about a physical pin versus a, a, a read pin. But this is the, the term that we use. And you can do a little mnemonic here remember, to remember, right? In, pin, input, port, O, output. Okay. And these are predefined symbols along with DDR. You can just treat these in your C code as if they were variables, right? They're already defined variables, basically. So just like you would say, you know, the variable A gets some value, like, oh, it's, you know, hex F3. You can do the same thing with these. Now you can say some port, and these are usually lettered. In this world, it's, you know, port B, port C, and so forth. You could say something like, you know, port B gets, you know, hex F3, right? So it's just kind of like a built-in variable that, that you, you have at your disposal, right? So we talk about, in this case, like a port B, a port C, or a pin B, or pin C. On the uh, 328, there's, it's a B, C, and D that we have. Um, same thing for the DDR. So we could talk about uh, port B, pin B, DDRB, or uh, port C, pin C, DDRC. And a little shortcut we use, if you're going to talk about a specific bit, is something like this. We'd say uh, port B dot zero. If I wanted to get the least significant bit that's how I would refer to it. We don't write code with this because a period in C, of course, has a completely different meaning. Um, so although we could use the word port B, the way we actually get to that requires a little bit of uh, extra work, some um, anding, oring, depending on what it is we're going to do. Um, but that's the, the sort of shorthand writing that we would use for it. Now, by default, all ports are initialized to read mode, in mode. In other words, uh, the DDRs, so I'll just call it DDRX, are basically initialized to zero. All right, so that's read mode. All right, so if you decide you're going to use a particular uh, bit for output, um, you're going to have to first set the data direction register to output mode. In other words, you're going to have to set that bit, set that bit high. Then you can go and do that. So in your Arduino code, you know, that, that little setup function, that's typically where you would do that. You'd set up the data direction registers. And then in the loop chunk, that loop code, that's where you would go and, you know, write or read. Okay. So it's not like something you're going to do over and over and over and over again. You're not going to be monkeying with, you know, DDRB repeatedly. It's just a setup kind of thing, and then whoop, off we go. That's the normal uh, way things work. Okay? Initialize to read mode. Because let's face it, when it powers up, you don't want it to be powered up so that it's going to be writing. You know, what's it connected to? Suddenly this output goes high. You got a motor that's connected, and suddenly the motor turns on. All right? When power goes on, we don't want that. It's safer to have things in read mode rather than write mode. Um, and then, like I said, we can 
uh, change them as we need them, right? So as I said, this is a highly simplified version of what's really there, but functionally it gives you an idea of, of what's actually happening here. Okay? All right, time to start doing some coding.